So this review is just going to be a quick overview of the Starshoe Autoguider just because it's so well known already. Uh, the Starshoe Autoguider is probably one of the most popular autoguiders of all time. Well, not probably, it is. Um, if you looked at anyone's images from hmm, five to ten years ago, every time they'd include their image specs with the autoguider, um, it was almost always the Starshoe Autoguider. Uh, it has a track record for being extremely reliable, extremely durable, but also extremely simple to use. And I, I think that is the reason why beginners just love these things. I love them. They're not complicated to use whatsoever, um, especially if you're using like PhD guiding or PhD2 guiding software. Uh, man, these are really, really easy to use for beginners, which is awesome. The Starshoe Autoguider couldn't be more simple to connect to your computer and get going. Um, all you do is you just plug in the two cords into the back. Uh, one's a USB cord that goes into your computer. Uh, the other is an ST4 that goes into your mount. Then you're pretty much ready to go. If you don't have updated drivers, you should be able to get them from Orion's website. Um, open up your software and you're ready to, to go for guiding. Setting up and using the Starshoe Autoguider couldn't be easier if you use PHD2 as your guiding program. Now there's lots of programs you can guide with, of course, um, but PHD2 makes things really easy. I mean, all you have to do is click on this bottom left here um, button. Once everything's connected, you just select, you know, Starshoe Autoguider from the list. Um, make sure the mount says on camera. You just click connect, connect. And that's it. And then once you basically have a star in here, you just click on it and hit guide. And it will guide for you. Um, now, if you want to get more into the, the settings, of course, you can adjust um, a lot of your guide settings in PHD. But if you're just getting started, that's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm just going to show you some examples of what the 1.3 megapixel Starshoe Auto Guider is capable of. Uh, this is an image I took of the North America Nebula uh, and the Pelican Nebula. I believe these were two minute exposures if I remember right. Um, but you can see that the guiding is actually pretty good. Um, this is Deneb over here in this corner. Uh, zooming in here, you can actually see, well, the guiding stays pretty consistent throughout. The stars aren't really stretched or anything like that. Moving on, this is an image of the Andromeda Galaxy M31 uh, with its satellite galaxies M32 um, and M110. And on this image, this was taken using an Orion ST80, which was just like a little 80 millimeter uh, refractor telescope. Uh, so not the best glass behind it, but it's still capable of producing a pretty decent image. Uh, zooming in on some of these stars, uh, you can see that they're still pretty concentric. I think these were 90 second exposures when I took this uh, image and the Orion Starshoot Autoguider, uh, of course, did a, did a good job. Again, there may be some artifacts and some noise just because it wasn't the best telescope to use. Um, but I'm actually pretty pleased with the result for such a budget telescope. Then lastly, this image is of the Orion Nebula M42. And <laughs> this image I got really good guiding with. So this was a, a combination of exposures. A couple 90 second exposures, a, a few 60 second exposures, a few 30 second exposures, um, just so I didn't blow out the core so much. Uh, but you can see these stars over here, the guiding is almost perfect. And what's actually really remarkable about this is I did not change the settings at all in PHD. I just used the default settings. So I found a good guide star, make sure it was focused. I clicked on it and I hit start guiding and that's all I did. Um, and it did a really good job. Um, most of the stars in this field are, are nice and round. And so the, the Starshoot Autoguider is just really simple to use. The Starshoot Autoguider is really good for wide field imaging. Um, so for that, I'd recommend using a 50 millimeter guide scope. Um, Orion makes a really good 50 millimeter guide scope. This is the, the version with the helical focuser on the back. They also make one that doesn't have a helical focuser. You just focus by sliding the Autoguider in and out until you get focus. Um, but for wide field imaging, the 50 millimeter guide scopes do really good up to focal uh, lengths of about mm, 1200 millimeters to about 1400 millimeters or so. Um, if you want to go beyond that, a longer focal length guide scope like an 80 millimeter refractor works pretty well. The Orion 50 millimeter guide scope fits in pretty much any 50 millimeter guide scope ring. So these are actually Explore Scientific rings uh, and it fits in there just fine as it should.
The Starshoe Auto Guider is also T-threaded, so if you want a more secure connection than just using the one and a quarter inch barrel, you can actually uh, just unscrew it, and if your, your guide scope has T-threads, you can actually just thread it right onto the guide scope, which will give you a lot more secure of a connection. So for everything that's great about the Starshoe Auto Guider, is there something I don't like about it? Well, of course there is, otherwise I wouldn't have mentioned it. Uh, I don't like that you can't use it for anything but auto guiding. Well, it's called an auto guider. What do you mean by that? Well, this is a 5.2 micron by 5.2 micron chip. It's actually a pretty decent camera and actually make a decent planetary camera. Uh, but there's no software included that allows you to use this and like record video frames with it or anything like that. Um, and you have to search really hard to find software that's able to do that and it doesn't work very well. So this thing has a lot of potential to be a really good planetary imager um, or even a decent lunar imager, um, but you really can't use it in that capacity. You can only use it as an auto guider pretty much. Now granted, it does an amazing job at auto guiding, um, but I think that's why there's a, there's a big push right now for a lot of people are using their planetary cameras as auto guiders like their ZWO ASI cameras or their Celestron Skyris or their VMKs or whatever they're using as their planetary camera actually makes for a good auto guider and so a lot of people are using their planetary cameras now as their auto guider instead of just using a dedicated auto guider because they can use that for two things rather than just one. If you're interested in packaging, this is what the Starshoot comes in, or at least it did when I purchased it. Um, it's a nice little aluminum or tin uh, box um, with a nice little picture of the, the double cluster on the front here, but it just comes in a nice foam padding with all the cords underneath it. So if you're starting into astrophotography and you're comfortable with how your telescope aligns and everything, but you want to make a step up and start auto guiding, I'd really recommend the Starshoe Auto Guider. I really don't think there's a more simple auto guider out there. Um, and there's a reason I have one, and it's because when I was a beginner, this is what I bought, and I still have it. Super reliable, super durable. So uh, if you're you know looking into getting into auto guiding, I'd highly recommend a, a Starshoe Auto Guider, or even if you want one that lasts a long time and is a good guider, um, I highly recommend it. I still use mine and uh, it hasn't failed me yet. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this quick overview. Uh, thanks so much for watching and have a good one.